Dick Barton, Special Agent. With the help of Dick Barton and Snowy White, Colonel Gardner, head of MO13, has tracked down Wilhelm Kramer and his gang to a deserted tea warehouse backing on the River Thames. Colonel Gardner and his personal assistant, Gene Hunter, with a strong force of police, attack. But Kramer has escaped to the river by a secret waterway. Upstairs in Kramer's office, Gene finds something lying on Kramer's desk. Colonel Gardner? Hmm? What's the trouble, Gene? There's a note here. Addressed to you. To me? Yes. Here on this desk. What the blazes? Well, I'll be... What is it, sir? It's from Kramer. This is what he says. Dear Colonel Gardner, you appear to have found your way into my headquarters. Let us see whether you can find your way out again. What the devil does he mean by that? Well, it sounds as though he's left a little surprise packet behind for us. Yeah, knowing friend Willie, nothing would surprise me, sir. Hmm, thing to do is to get out of the place as soon as we can. Maybe some papers here worth taking with us, shall we? Hello? What was that? Quick! Quick! Captain Barton, sir! There's a perishing in sentry bomb gone off! Coming, Snowy. Stay where you are, Miss Hunter. Why? In case there's any more about to go off, silly. Where are you, Snowy? Out here, sir. Look down there. The old stairs is a mass of flames. Never seen anything get going so quick in my life. One minute everything was peaceful and quiet. Next thing I knew, the old perishing issue was alive. Come on, Snowy. Back to the top again. Quick, let's see if there's any other way out. Well, Barton, we're in a tough spot, sir. We can't get down the stairs and the whole place is going up like a matchbox. I wonder if there's a fire escape on the outside of the building. You know, Inspector? I just had a look, sir. Doesn't appear to be one. Well, let's have a look at the stairs again. Great heavens, we shouldn't stand a chance down there. Perhaps if we wrap something round our mouths, it might be possible just down there. Get back, Jean. Don't step on that stair. Come back here. What do you think you're doing? Jesus! There's the stairway gone. Sorry to be a bit rough, Miss Hunter. It's all right. Thanks. Well... Unless we make a move. <coughs> Only one thing. <coughs> oh, curse the smoke. <coughs> Let's have a look at the windows. <coughs> this one's no good, sir. I thought as much. See? Looks out on the street. But there should be a squad of police out there. <coughs> yes, that's Hillary Street. <coughs> they could get a sheet or something. <coughs> Inspector, give your men a shout and tell them to have a sheet ready. Hey! Sergeant! <coughs> Sergeant Bradley! He's seeing you. Look, he's signaling. Shout! <coughs> Can only just hear you! We're trapped! <coughs> Can't get down. Get a sheet. Get a sheet. You get it all right, sir. Yes, he's, he's dashing over to the fire engines. Well, hope he gets a move on. I don't know about you people, but I'm getting a bit hot. This place certainly burns well. How do you feel, Jean? Oh, warmish. Nothing to worry about yet. Are they bringing the rescue sheet? <coughs> Here it comes, just the job. Shout! When you're ready. Ready, sir. Okay, Jean. Go on, my dear. You first. I don't want to go first. Look, don't hang about. There's no time to waste. Oh, sorry. Well, here goes, sir. Good luck, Jean. Lady coming down! Don't worry, miss. Just jump. They'll catch you. They've been doing this for years. Never missed one yet. I'm not scared. Okay. We'll hold you on the window sill till you've got your balance. Say when you're ready yes. to jump. There you are. Ready? Off you go, then. She made it. Yeah, God guts that girl. <laughs> Don't waste time, chaps. The sky's getting distinctly warmer. We've all got to go the same way home. You next, Colonel Gardner, okay? Then the inspector, then Snowy and me. No, no, after you. Sorry, no arguments. Good luck, sir. Same to you. Jump! Look, Jean, here come Barton and his friend Snowy. That's the lot. We're all out now. Can't keep a couple of good blokes down, you know. Good work, Snowy. And you too, Barton. Here, you'd better each have some of this. As I live, brandy. Thanks a lot, Miss Hunter. My pleasure, Mr. Barton. Here, Snowy. No, no, after you, sir. Oh, that's the stuff. <coughs> Snowy? Oh, tar, sir. Oh. Oh, that's better. Now, Colonel Gardner, to business. 
I told you I discovered that the other scientist, James Thurgood, is definitely in league with Kramer now, sir. Mm, I was afraid he might be from what Archie Wrangle told us. Yes, he tried to get us to join Kramer's outfit. Did he, by Joe? So I think we can forget the kidnap story. Now, what are we going to do about Kramer and his gang? I've already notified the river police. They put a cordon across the river, north and south of the warehouse. But it's probably too late. Now we'll go to my car and get back to the office. Surely Kramer will take things easy for a bit, sir. I don't know. He hasn't got that formula. He badly needs it before he can work the secret weapon. I wouldn't be surprised if... Excuse me, Colonel Gardner, sir. Yes, yes, what is it, Inspector? There's an urgent call radio call for you, sir. For me? Oh, well, I'll take it right away. Yes, Gardner speaking. Oh, uh, hello, sir. Uh, this is the sergeant in charge of the armed guard, sir. Uh, the, the guard you placed on Sir Archie Rangel uh, at the hospital, sir. Well, son, what is it? I brought Sir Archie to your office, sir, at ML-13. My office? In accordance with your instructions, sir. But I've given no instructions for Sir Archie to be moved from the hospital. Oh, well, excuse me, sir, but I've got your written instructions here, sir. My written instructions? Yes, sir. Colonel Gardner. Yes, yes, what is it, Miss Hunter? Ask to speak to Sir Archie. Good idea. Hello. Hello, are you there? Ye yes, sir. I'd like to speak to Sir Archie, if I may. Well, he's still unconscious, sir. Jeannie says he's still unconscious. He wasn't unconscious when I left him at the hospital last night. Don't understand it. Something fishy. The sooner we get along there, the better. Look here. Pile into the car, everybody. We've got to get back to my office. Quick. Hello, Porter. Hello, Have you had the lift today? No, sir, no. No accidents today, sir. Thank goodness for that. There's a deputation of army blokes waiting to see you, sir, with, with a stretcher case. Ah, oh, where are they? In the ante room over there, sir. And here's a sergeant now. Right, sergeant. I'm Colonel Gardner. Good afternoon, sir. Afternoon, sir. What's all this about? Well, I was on duty with the guard at the hospital, sir, when we got your urgent message that the patient was wanted here. I sent no message. But you sent no message, sir, but I, I've, I've got it here. Look. Hmm. Bring Sir Archie Wrangle to War Office at once. And signed by me, eh? Yes, sir. On War Office notepaper. I say it looks authentic enough. But didn't you send it, sir? I've never seen it before. Anyway, where's Sir Archie now? Just over here, sir. Snoring his head off. Come on, let's have a look. There he is, sir. Sleeping like a newborn babe, only louder. <laughs> It's not Sir Archie. What? what? It looks very like him, but it's definitely not him. You sure, Miss Hunter? What do you mean, Miss? Sir Archie smoked a lot of cigarettes. I noticed his hand. There were nicotine stains in the fingers. There aren't any on this man's. No. There were stains on Sir Archie's moustache, too. Look, this man's moustache is just grey. If it's a real moustache, excuse me, sir. If the old boy's drugged, he won't feel a gentle tug on his whiskers, will he? There. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, I'll be jiggered. It's come off. So, it's not Sir Archie, which means... That karma has got him. Ring up the hospital, Jean. See what you can find out. Right away, sir. Everything now depends on whether this Sir Archie can be made to talk, and I don't think it'll be difficult. No, no. Wait a minute, Barton. What we've got to find out first, and find out fast, is where the devil is the real Sir Archie? Pretty obvious, I should think, sir. This is plan two of Willie Kramer with a vengeance. He's got the second scientist who invented the secret weapon, and he'll force him to give him the antidote. Once he's got that, nothing will stop Kramer. You'll see. Ah, Jean. What's happened to the hospital? The worst, I'm afraid, sir. They found the surgeon unconscious in a corner with a nasty head wound. Why hasn't this been reported before? They've only just discovered it. Apparently there was a notice outside his door, do not disturb. Quite a usual thing when he's engaged on research. And Sir Archie Wrangle? No trace, sir. Hmm, bad show. Well, son, get your men to carry this Sir Archie into the other room. Very good, sir. That's it. Thanks, Sarge. Into his room. Into right. this room over here. He's obviously drugged, but when he recovers consciousness, I'll have a word with him. If you want any help, let me know. Uh, excuse me, Captain Barton, sir. Yes, what is it, Snowy? Well, I took the liberty of helping myself to a few of the things in this Sir Archie's pockets while he was being put in there. Mm -hmm. Here they are. Well, good idea, Snowy. Let's have them on this table. Uh -huh. Yeah, some money, an old bill. Diary. That's a funny thing for a chappie in his line of business to keep. Uh, will you take a look through it, Miss Hunter? Okay, Mr. Barton. <laughs> this formality is a bit wearing. Yes, I think we might drop the ceremony. It suits me. Jean? Hello? What? This diary's full of nothing but details of money drawn and spent. But there is the name of a house written in pencil on the flyleaf. Lodge Hall. Funny sort of a name. Any address? No. What have you found, Snowy? Well, uh, only this bill for potatoes, of all things. A bill from a greengrocer? Yes. 
But not much clue there, though. It's, it's made out to Smith. How many potatoes? Oh, two sacks. Two sacks? That's quite a large order. Is there a name and address on the billhead? Yes. The name of the greengrocer and his phone number. That's it, then. Yes, Jean, I see what you mean. The greengrocer may remember the customer. Better still, he may have delivered the potatoes. Where's the nearest phone? Out here, I'll show you. Come on, Snowy. It's a chance, anyway. Yes, but I hope that nice old man, the real Sir Archie, isn't going through the mill. Let's talk it over quietly, my dear Sir Archie. Why not be sensible? You are completely in my power. I may tell you at once, I am determined to have your formula, whatever steps it should be necessary for me to take. You'll get no formula from me. You should not be quite so positive, Sir Archie. Far stronger men than you have begun by being awkward and ended, well, one way or another. You're sure you feel safe enough with me? After all, I've only got a broken collarbone and a broken leg. I might attack you. My dear and... Angle, your falling down the lift shaft was an accident which no one regretted more than I. Gardner should have had that little experience, not you. All the more reason for helping us, Wrangle, you fool. With our weapon, the three of us can control the world. I never liked you very much, James Thurgood. I respected your brains, though. Now I have neither liking nor respect for you. We're wasting valuable time on him, Kramer. He was always a fool. I would rather have cooperation than antagonism, my dear sir. Well, you won't get any cooperation from Wrangle. It was as much as I could ever do to get that, even when we were working together. That was because instinctively, Thurgood, I recognized you for what you have proved to be. Ah. No! Uh. You cowardly swine! Why not give us the necessary information, Wrangle? <laughs> It would save so much time and trouble. You won't get away with this. Ah, but I assure you we shall. Gardner has no idea where you are. Now come along. Be sensible. You're wasting your time. I'm beginning to grow a little bored, Sir Archie. So we may have to use some other way to make you talk. You fool, Wrangle. Can't you see we intend to have the formula? Not for me. For the last time. Are you going to be sensible? I warn you, Thurgood. Any more of this torture, and you will be sorry. You're not in a position to make threats. I'm warning you. You won't get away with it. I'll repay this last half hour if I have to wait a lifetime. I've heard enough from you, Wrangle. Hold his arm, will you, Kramer? <laughs> now will you talk? <laughs> Kramer, quick, quick. He's got me. Let him go, you old fool. Let go. Right then, take a back of the... You fool, Terracote. He had my throat. With one hand. A crippled old man and you can't deal with him. He had my throat. Don't oh, stop whimpering, Terracote. We must get this information out of Randall and quick. There's only one thing left, Grabber. The drug? Yes. He won't talk any other way. We'll have to give him the truth drug. In his weakened state, he should react quickly and favorably. If I administer it now, just before he returns to consciousness, it won't have time to wear off before we question him. How long will it take? Oh, not long, not long at all. Pass me that needle, will you, Grabber? Thank you. There. <laughs> what will happen to Sir Archie? Will the truth drug work? Is Colonel Gardner on his way? Listen to the next installment of Dick Barton, Special Agent.